Dad just looked at me and he said, no, you can't play this game. Until you start playing the missions and start actually playing the storyline, you're not gonna play Grand Theft Auto 3. I forbid you to play this game. These are his words. You know, a lot of times parents back then, growing up in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of concern over whether or not video games were causing kids to be violent. I can't name one game that my dad was really opposed to me playing until a little game known as Grand Theft Auto 3 came into our living room sometime in 2001. I think my partner's a rat. We gotta shut him up. They want a war, they got a war. Grand Theft Auto 3. Out now on PlayStation 2 and coming soon to PC. Rated M for Mature. My first experience playing Grand Theft Auto as a series was with Grand Theft Auto 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. I remember I had gotten the game on a demo disc. They were really promoting the Dreamcast version of Grand Theft Auto 2. It looked and played awesome. I remember dad watching me play it and him really being amazed by all the cool effects and the explosions that would happen. The fact that it was a very open world game. You could just get out of your car and start walking around the city. And um, it was really, really interesting. From that top-down perspective, it felt like you were in a helicopter and you were maybe the police themselves kind of watching this chase go on or, or you know, kind of like in those uh, classic car chases that we used to see on the news, you know, I think back to the O.J. Simpson trial and stuff like that. It was ingenious in its gameplay. When the PlayStation 2 arrived, we started hearing about a new Grand Theft Auto game in the works. And really, there wasn't much hype around it. I can tell you right now, it really, it really wasn't a game that was quite on our radar. Then the, the magazines started revealing the, the screenshots and, and images of this game. And it became more and more clear that this was gonna be a, a day one buy. You know, I was playing games like Shenmue and Shenmue was like this first open world kind of realistic game that made me want to basically take control of another person's life and live out this story in video game form. And I loved Shenmue. It was one of my favorite games of all time, still is. Grand Theft Auto 3 looked to be a lot like Shenmue, but really take it a step further and head more into a mafia crime drama story. But this promised to be very open world, just like Shenmue was. And so I know with Shenmue fresh on my mind in those years, Grand Theft Auto 3 became very exciting. It's as close as you can get to like killing someone without like being arrested. We got the game really close to launch. I don't really remember where we picked it up. Probably our local GameStop where we bought a lot of games around this time. And um, we brought it home and popped it into the PlayStation 2. And little did I know what was about to unfold. Maybe five to 10 minutes into playing the game, I, I no longer cared to do anything with the story. In fact, all I wanted to do was just run around this open world sandbox, stealing cars, beating up pedestrians and killing cops. It's as close as you can get to like, killing someone without like being arrested or really killing someone. Kill police officers. Hire prostitutes. That was like the whole point of the game, it seemed to me at this point. Like it was, it was fun to do these terrible things in this virtual world, in this, this make-believe world. I would never have done this in real life. As a kid, a 14, 15-year-old kid, it never once crossed my mind. But it didn't matter to Dad. I'm playing the game. You know, it was called Liberty City, and so it was supposed to be this sort of make-believe fantasy version of New York City. And man, did they, they really made it look like it and, and feel like it. And man, I can just remember changing the radio station on the dial of the car 
and and just that ultra realistic feel like you were really taking control of the uh, of this this crime guy this 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 mafioso this is pops capo tony cipriani hey i'm tony cipriani take him to mama's restaurant at st mark's all right it was really a lot like goodfellas you know when he opens up the film and he said all my life i wanted to be a gangster the triads think they can mess with me let's teach these would-be tough guys what it means yeah. to be a tough guy it made everyone who ever played it feel like they could be Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. They could live out that, that dream or fantasy of being a gangster. As I started playing the game, my dad, I remember he was probably reading the newspaper or a magazine or something, and he's sitting on the couch and he kind of glances, keeps glancing back up and he, he's hearing the chaos. He's hearing all these explosions and things happening on the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm killing, you know, innocent, pedestrians running them over with these stolen vehicles. Finally, he just kind of glances at me and he looks at me and he goes, what are you doing? I uh, put my controller down, I'll glance back and say, I'm playing the game. What do you mean you're playing the game? And I said, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm driving around, I'm, I'm exploring, you know. He was, yeah, but you're not, you're not, what's, where's, what's going on in the storyline? You're not, you're not doing any of the story missions now. You're just running around killing people. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with that. It was really interesting because my dad had a very moral obligation here, watching his son, my 15-year-old self, do these horrible, horrible things. And this is stuff that we had never done in a video game before. We'd never taken control of this avatar that could do these sort of things. That moral conviction kind of rose up in dad in this moment. And he said to me, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. I'll never, I'll never forget him saying this to me like, no, stop, stop what you're doing. He goes, Tyler, I tell you this right now. If you're gonna, if all you're gonna do in this game is run around and kill innocent people and cops and run them over and all these different things that he was seeing, he goes, you're not allowed to play this game. I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. This was like the first time in my life that my dad had ever, ever spoke with authority like this over a video game. I remember I had a bit of an argument with him. I kind of like turned around and I was like, what do you mean I can't play? It really got to a point where we both were arguing back and forth. I, I felt like I had done nothing wrong, that I had a right to play the game the way I wanted to play it. And dad just looked at me and said, no, you can't play this game. Until you start playing the missions and start actually playing the storyline, you're not going to play Grand Theft Auto 3. I was good you to play this game. I was blown away. At one point, he explained it to me, and, and this is what I always remembered from that encounter and that moment. Dad did not like how realistic the game was. The violence in the game and the, the things you were doing were too realistic and down to earth. They were too close to reality. The other games, like Mortal Kombat and games like that that were violent and maybe had blood, I think Dad understood and saw those as very comic book-like and cartoony in their violence. You know, they weren't realistic, over-the-top um, fantasy. And uh, Grand Theft Auto was just very realistic. I mean, the guns, the, the, the sound effects of people screaming and running in terror. I thought about it, you know, I slept on it. I was about 15 years old and I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna go to high school the next day. I remember all through the school day thinking about how dad had banned me from this game, how like uh, this brand new game, dad had never done anything like this to me when it came to video games. So I really had to think long and hard about it and think about what I was gonna do and what I was gonna say to try to win back my privileges of playing Grand Theft Auto 3. I got home, I told my dad, I said, you know, I'm gonna play it the way you want me to play it. You know, I'm gonna do the storyline. Cause that was the thing. I had to do the game 
storyline which made it a game. Whereas if I just ran around on a killing rampage, it was just some sort of murder simulator. At some point along the way, I remember dad just kind of shrugging his shoulders and saying, you know what, just, just play it however you want to play it. I know that you're a good kid. Of course he knew I was a good kid. He knew I wouldn't do anything. I feel like with the passage of time and some maturity even, I, I, I just, I understand now more of where dad was coming from. And I'm no longer upset with his actions and his concern over me playing the game. I think I needed to have that ban placed on this game for me, at least just for that one night, just so I could understand the seriousness of what I was getting into, what I was playing, you know, not to take it lightly. This wasn't too long after the horrible incidents at Columbine and stuff like that. And so I think that was on a lot of people's minds, you know, this, uh, what's going on uh, with media? You know, what's happening? Because, you know, when that happened, there was a lot of talk about like movies like The Matrix and stuff like that. And even some games that were brought up like Doom. Um, and, and, you know, that, that was in the public consciousness quite a bit. And I think even though my dad was not a, um, naysayer he didn't he wasn't against vi video games he didn't he did not villainize video games this was the first game that i think ever made him take caution a little bit i think he kind of like was taken aback after he witnessed what i was doing in the game a year later christmas of 2002 dad was no longer shunning this game or trying to ban it from me no in fact he was gifting the sequel to me Vice City. <laughs> Can't right. see that game, it's too adult. Yeah, I don't think you can see this game, though. Your 12 year old friend has it, huh? No, he's only, he's nine. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much. If anything, it showed that my dad really cared and he really loved me and he really wanted to make sure that I'd go down the right road and that nothing, even a video game, would get in the way of that. Well guys, that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this look back on Grand Theft Auto 3 and why it was a game my dad banned me from playing it on that infamous night. He did eventually come around and I, I got through a lot of Grand Theft Auto 3 and its sequels. I wanna know, do you have a similar story with Grand Theft Auto 3? Did your mom or dad or maybe a grandparent watch you play this game and say, hey, hold on a second. I don't want you playing this game anymore. Oh man, it's so funny when I think about that night and what happened and really, I'm just glad it all happened the way it did because now I have a story to tell all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. I love talking about my game crazy family and all of the amazing adventures we had with video games, so many of which were caught on tape by my dad. All right guys, that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.